بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دس سیشن وی شیل اسٹڈی دی قرآنک ڈائریکٹوز وچ ہیو بین ریویلڈ ریگارڈنگ پولیگمی اف مینز وچ نیچر از کیپٹ ان ٹو کنسیڈریشن ون کین ایزیلی کنکلوڈ دیٹ دی ریئل بینیفٹس آف دی انسٹیٹیوشن آف دی فیملی مینیفیسٹ ایم سیلز ان اے مناگمس فیملی دیٹ از اے فیملی ان وچ اے ہسبینڈ اینڈ وائف کم ان ٹو کم ٹوگیدر ٹو فارم اے فیملی اٹ از اونلی سرٹن کلچرل پولیٹیکل فزیولوجیکل نیڈز which at times have forced a person to marry more than one wife. And of course, to cater for these very needs, the Sharia revealed by the Almighty in various periods of time have also, has also catered for these needs. And primarily, it is certain, certain social needs which had arisen in the time of the last prophet that these verses were revealed so that they could actually solve a social problem. In those days, uh, uh, during very many battles, So as many children had become orphans and wives had become and ladies had become widows so in order to take care of these orphans the quran made an appeal to muslims to come forward and marry these uh, uh, the wives of these uh, the mothers of these orphans so that they could be taken care of in a better manner however he uh, the quran made this these marriages conditional and it imposed two conditions on these marriages The first of these was that they could not, the person could not marry more than four wives. And second was that if a marriage had to take place for such reasons and it had to go to a certain number, that is four, then it was essential that the husband should dispense justice. He should treat the wives equally. By, these, uh, by this treatment, of course, is not meant that uh, he should have the same inclination of heart towards all the wives or he should love them in the same manner. The truth of the matter is that he should deal with them justly. He should be equitable to them. And as far as the matter of the heart is concerned, this is something which he has no power of. And he, uh, of course, is not required to show the same inclination towards his wife. However, the Quran says uh, that if a person thinks that he would not be able to deal justly with, um, with multiple wives, then he should suffice or content himself with the number that he is able to do justice with. And in this regard, justice is the value which must reign supreme. And as I clarified that justice does not mean the inclination of the heart. It means that the rights of each of the wives should be given in the same manner. The Quran also clarifies in this regard that if a marriage is contracted for the welfare of the orphans or, and for the welfare of the widows, then the pretext should not be adopted that since this marriage is taking place for their support, the husband should not give the dower. The Quran says that even in such cases, a husband is obligated. He is bound to give this dower. However, if a wife herself foregoes a part of it or wants to give some concession in this regard, then of course the husband can benefit from this. The Quran also says that if in certain cases the insistence made by a wife to be treated equally uh, with, with the other wives causes the husband to be negligent to her or to even divorce her, then the two can settle for a compromise and the two can, of, of course, the wife can forego some of her rights so that she is able to maintain the family structure and this structure is not disrupted. So therefore, if we study these directives, it comes, becomes absolutely evident that these directives in the Quran were not revealed because some directive regarding polygamy was, was intended. They were actually revealed to solve a social problem which had arisen in the times of the Prophet. And hence, therefore, this, these directives should be studied in their proper context and their proper perspective. In this regard, there are two clarifications perhaps which, be of, uh, which would be appropriate to be uh, clarified here. The first of them is that there are certain people who think that marrying four wives is a physical requirement of a man. This, of course, is an erroneous conclusion and it is evident from the discussion that we've just done that this is not the case. And had this been the case, the Almighty would have uh, created four wives for Adam, the first of our species. The second clarification in this regard is that there are certain people who think that if men have been given the permission to marry four wives, why have not wives been given the permission to marry four men? Well, in this regard, two things must be kept into consideration. The first of them is that if such a permission would have been given, it would have been difficult to protect the lineage of the child a lady might be carrying at that time. And someone can argue that the DNA tests which have uh, in this advanced medical age which have uh, been uh, come into being, they could have been used to 
determine the lineage of the child and to determine which of the husbands that child belongs to, then we are faced with the second more important question and that is that how can someone be kept in the obedience of four people simultaneously? Had a wife been given the permission to wed four husbands, she would have to live in obedience to four husbands simultaneously, which of course some, which is something which is quite impossible. For these reasons actually, Islam has not allowed a wife to marry four husbands.